one. Namaskar. My name is Holly Walkastora and I'm a senior certified Iyengar yoga teacher. And today we're practicing the, um, I don't remember which sequence it is. I know what it is now, seven, start again. Three, seven. two, one. Namaskar, my name is Holly Walkastora and I'm a senior certified Iyengar yoga teacher. And today we're practicing the seventh sequence in the first section of my book, Your Year of Yoga, Learning to Love Practice, which is available at www.yogawithholly.com. So I have my um, student Elvin here with me today, and he's going to be demonstrating the, um, because he came to yoga later in life and um, uh, has some stiffness in his hips and his hamstrings, as well as his um, a lot of, uh, many um, uh, shoulder uh, problems when he was younger from playing contact sports. Um, he's going to be showing um, some modifications for you today while I demonstrate the classic poses. But before we get to the asana portion of our program, in order for it to become yoga asana, um, we're going to um, have some discussion of yoga philosophy. So, um, the um, yoga of action is the means for um, minimizing the causes of um, uh, suffering. And that's uh, Kriya Yoga, is the yoga of action, that is the means for the um, minimization and then ultimately the eradication um, of the kleshas. Kleshas are the sources of, um, or the root causes of suffering or frustration that keep the chitta vrittying, the mind turning and whirling around. And we know that yoga chitta vritti naroga, narodaha, um, from that second sutra of the first chapter, yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. And if the means to ultimately reducing and um, eliminating the kleshas which cause the vrittis is kriya yoga, we better look up what that is. So I'm using my um, Sanskrit dictionary by John Denton, and we're going, going to read to you um, the definition for kriya. It means activity. Doing, rites, offerings, the performance of actions, an undertaking, to work, to labor, bodily action, the exercise of the limbs, any sacrificial act or sacrifice. There is only one activity in truth. The entire creation is this activity, manifesting the glory and substance of the absolute. At different times, this activity may be called speaking, writing, resting, going, or living, but at all times it is manifesting the substance of the Absolute. Name and form may change, but the Absolute does not. The ocean and its waves are of the same substance. The waves are in motion and ever-changing, but the substance, the water, remains the same. So, the names of the poses and the shapes that we're placing ourselves in may change, but our awareness and our tension are going to remain on the activity that we're performing as an offering. Perhaps to Lord Patanjali, the one who gave us yoga for serenity and sanctity of mind. Okay, let's begin. We're going to start in Tadasana. And if you practice the yoga for beginners sequence that's on my YouTube channel, we started practicing the first time Tadasana with the feet apart. And in Tadasana, the arms are straight, the legs are straight, the arms are straight, the trunk is stretching up in the direction of the head as 
The front of the trunk is stretching up and the sides of the trunk in the direction of the head as from the buttocks you descend down towards the heels energetically, okay? So the quadriceps are lifting up and the inner back thighs are lifting up, but the inner and the outer heels are pressing down and into the floor. Turn the front of the thighs in and the backs of the thighs from the inside out, but don't let the calves roll out. Keep the outer calves pinned in, the inner edges of the heels down as you lift the inner back thighs up, turn the back thighs out, and the front of the thighs from the outside in. Stretch the sides of the trunk up in the direction of the head, and then from the center of the chest, lift up and spread out across the collarbones and the tops of your shoulder blades. Now, where the top or the, um, uh, the collarbones and the shoulders meet is at the top of the upper arm bone. See that the top of the upper arm bone is back behind the chest. Don't let the top of the upper arm bones go forward. Take the shoulders, roll them back, spread out across the top of the um, shoulders and the clavicles so that, that you can take the top of the upper arms back. Now, see that the buttocks don't lift up. Move the buttocks down and lift from the bottom of the pubis up towards the chest. Now, with an exhalation, you're going to bring your legs together, but as you bring those legs and the feet together, see that you continue to turn the backs of the thighs out, the front of the thighs in, and that more of the weight of the body doesn't land on one foot. So you have to continue to reach from the right side of your abdomen down into your right leg, from the left side of your abdomen, down into your left leg. Now, spread out across the tops of the shoulders again and see if you can bring the forearms, the wrists, and the hands closer in towards each other. Keep the top of the thighs back, especially at the inner upper thighs, so that those inner upper thighs are balanced over the inner ankles and the inner heels. Now, with an exhalation, turn the upper arms and the um, palms to face out towards the wall behind, uh, to the sides of you, and raise the arms up. Now, you had the top of the upper arm bones back before, yes? Behind the front of the chest. So you have to keep the inner thighs pulled up and back and towards the wall behind you, and spread out across the collarbones and the top of the shoulders, and take the top of the upper arm bones, where the collarbones and the um, outer collarbones and outer shoulder blades meet, back towards the wall behind you. Now continue on that journey to taking the arms up to Urdhva Hastasana while maintaining the broadening across the back of the chest, the front of the chest, and the top of the upper arm bones moving back and towards the wall behind you. Lift the elbows up and take them back. Lift the wrists up and take them slightly forward as you take the elbows and the upper arms back. Now with an exhalation and seeing that the, you're still reaching down evenly into both feet, take the arms back down, but don't let the armpits go down. Lift the sides of the trunk and the armpits up as you take those arms back down. Now we're taking the arms out in front. Now let's take the feet apart again because this is the first time we're taking the arms up from out in front, you have to see that as you take the arms up from out in front, and see, Elvin, can you bring your wrists a little closer together while lifting the armpit chest up? There you go. Now, keep the inner upper thighs back over the inner ankles and the inner heels, spread out across the top of the shoulders and the clavicles, and take the top of the upper arm bones back behind the chest. As you take the arms up halfway, see that the thighs don't go forward. Keep the quadriceps pulled 
up and back onto the front of the thigh bones and the upper back thighs opening out. Now spread out across the collarbones and the tops of the shoulder blades, stretch the elbows completely and imagine somebody came underneath you right at the center of the back of your upper arm bone and pull them straight up towards the ceiling. Now you lift your head and look up. As you lift your head and look up, lift the back ribs, move the back ribs at the bottom back and up slightly and towards the wall behind you. Feel how that keeps the middle buttocks moving forward as you do that. Now take the uh, wrists forward, upper arms and elbows back and then bring your head to the center. That's it. Now, Keep, as you bring your head back to the center, keep moving the back, the bottom back ribs back and lifting them up as you lower your arms down. Don't let the middle buttocks move backward. Keep them moving forward and the backs of the thighs opening out. Come to the center of your mat. Join the inner edges of your feet. We're practicing Utkatasana. This is the fierce pose. So, I'm going to turn sideways and Elvin's going to face forward. Now, keep the inner back thighs lifting up and moving back in line with the inner heels. Inhale and with an exhalation, raise your arms up again. Don't let the front of the thighs go forward or the quadriceps drop downward. Press the front of the heels down to lift the front of the thighs up. And Watch these um, bottom back ribs. Don't let them drop down and move forward. They have to move back and lift up and towards your thumbs. Now with an exhalation and keeping those elbows locked. Upper arms back behind the ears. Bend your knees, keeping the weight in the inner back heels and the outer back heels. As you bend forward at the hips where they meet the top of the thighs, Use the stretch of the arms to keep the trunk, the front of the trunk and the sides of the trunk elongating. So the front of the trunk energetically is lifting up as the hips descend down. Now with an exhalation, inhale, uh, exhale, inhale and come up and then release your arms. Okay, this time we're going to practice the pose by taking the knees um, by bending the knees first and then raising the arms up. Okay, now with an exhalation and keeping the inner thighs back over the inner ankles, backs of the thighs turning out, front of the thighs turning in, take your hands to your hips. Now take this part of your hand where your thumbs and your index fingers meet to the top of the buttocks and press down. Now Go to the middle buttock and press forward, just forward with your hands. Feel how your thighs go forward. You can even see that on me. Yep. Can you feel that, Elvin? Yes. Okay, now, Elvin, try this. Keep your hands pressing forward as if you're trying to prevent yourself from being able to, and you with the top of your thighs push back, 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 until you end up back in Tadasana with the ankles over the knees and the knees over the hips. Now keep the hands pressing forward, the buttocks, the hips pressing backward, and bend your knees simultaneously. Don't stop, don't let the hips go forward towards the knees, pull them back towards your hands, and bend forward even more. Now keep the front of the thigh, of the front of the pelvis pulled up and away from the floor. Press your feet down into the floor to help lift the front of the trunk up. Now with an exhalation, take your arms out in front of you, pull your hips back and down towards the floor as you take the arms up. Now raise your head and look up and spread out across the top of your shoulders as you bring your palms together. If you can, Elvin's going to keep his hands apart and then bring your head back to the center. Elbows up and back, upper arms near the shoulders up and back. And now with an inhalation, Come back to Tadasana and then lower your arms. Time for Uttita Trikonasana. Take your hands to your collarbones, bend your knees, and jump your arms and legs wide and out to the sides. Now, we've practiced this pose before with the hand on the waist, and we're going to do that now. 
So you're going to turn your right leg out from the top of the thigh. But when you turn the top of the thigh out, the leg out from the top of the thigh, this right side of the pelvis has to turn over to the left and then you reach down from that left side of your abdomen, from your pelvis, into your left foot. Now, Elvin's going to place his hand on the block. I'm going to place my hand on the shin, maybe on the floor. I haven't practiced Trikonasana today, so I'm not sure well where I'll land. But what we are going to do is spread out across this left side of the chest and the top of the shoulder and then take the top of that upper arm and turn it back towards the wall behind you and pull that elbow in. Now with an exhalation, take the right hand down, extend the right side of the trunk towards the head. That's it, <laughs> good. Now both legs straight, keep the heels pressing down, front thighs lifting up and the top of the thighs pressing back. And from here you're going to take your left arm, reach it out to the left, turn the palm to face forward and now reach from the shoulder towards the hand as you take the arm up, don't let the shoulder drop down. Keep that left shoulder stretching up, right uh, top of the left shoulder reaching up towards the left thumb, top of the right shoulder blade moving towards the floor, and then you move your sternum and your collarbones forward. Elongate your neck and your head and move the crown of your head away from your hips. But just like in Utkatasana, pull the hips back away from the head and down towards the feet. Now reach up through that left arm, down through the left foot, and turn your trunk up. Inhale to come up. Now turn your feet to face forward, going right to the other side. We're using Trikonasana to warm us up for the other standing poses we're going to do today. So now I've turned the left leg out. And it's on this side a little more challenging for me to bring that left side of the pelvis forward because I have some restriction here in this right hip. So I'm going to reach down into that left heel, lift the right or right heel, lift the left so right side of my pelvis up, and then once I get this hip joint open, I can press that top thigh back and turn that left hip around even more. Remember to keep the top of that left thigh turned out as you turn the pelvis to the right. Now take the right hand to the waist, and as you did in Uttatasana, you have to move the buttocks down, hips down, buttocks down towards the feet, and lift the frontal hip bones and the pubis up in the direction of your head. Now spread out across that right collarbone and the top of the right shoulder blade till you can take the top of the arm bone out to the side and then bring it back and towards the wall behind you. Now stamp that right heel down, the whole circumference of the heel, lift the front thighs up and press them onto the front of the thigh bones as you take that left hand down. Now lift the inner right thigh up, lift the inner right thigh up and press the top of the right thigh back and towards the wall behind you. Keep that left side of the trunk moving forward towards your head and keep both sides of the pelvis, the abdomen, the chest, and the collarbones facing forward. Now with an exhalation, keeping your inner left heel pressing down, outer left thigh lifting up, right hip pressed back, turn your pelvis, abdomen, chest to face forward. Now move the collarbones and the tops of the shoulder blades away from the neck, and then move your sternum forward towards your head, lengthen the front of your head, and move the crown of your head forward as you pull your hips back and towards the wall behind you, especially that left hip. Pull it back, up and back, and towards the wall behind you. Now, extend out through your right arm, turn your palm to face forward. Now, reach from this right outer shoulder towards your thumb, and as you take your arm up, you have to keep that right shoulder blade lifting up away from your spine. Don't let it sink down. You have to press that left shoulder back to help reach up through that right shoulder. Now press down through the right foot, reach up and back through the left right arm, and inhale to come up. Turn your feet to face forward, bend your knees, and jump, or step your arms and legs 
Back together again. Uddita Parshva Kanasana. Extended side angle pose. So from Tadasana, take your hands up in line with your collarbones. Bend your knees and jump your arms and legs apart. Now, we're going to practice Uddita Parshva Kanasana the same way we practiced Uddita Trikonasana, where we start with the hand on the waist and then stretch the arm up and then overhead. So, you're going to turn your right leg out, turn your left toes in slightly, and now pull that left outer hip in and lift the right side of the pelvis up and away from the floor. Keep the top of that right thigh turned out. As you press your inner right heel down, draw your outer right thigh up and pin that outer right hip in. But when you pull that right hip in, you have to see that the pelvis also turns to the left. Now with an exhalation and keeping the right side of your trunk lifting up, bend your hip, move that right buttock bone down and look at your right knee. Make sure that your knee continues to face forward over your toes and that the knee isn't coming forward over your inner foot. If it is, you're going to take your arm down and bring your arm inside your leg to help keep that knee pinned back. Otherwise, and with an exhalation, you're going to stretch, stretch out over your right leg and take your hand down to the floor. Now, keep the back of the, keep the sternum lifting up in the direction of the head, and with an exhalation, turn that left palm to face forward and raise your left arm up. Turn both upper arms away from each other. Reach down into your inner left heel and back into your outer left heel. And keep that, both the knees turning away from each other and the chest moving towards the head. Now turn your palm to face the wall that the direction of your head is facing. Keep that shoulder lifting up towards your hand as you take your arm over your head. So your left shoulder blade lifts up away from your spine and towards the ceiling as the arm goes overhead. Now reach up and back and towards the wall behind you. Press your back heel down to inhale and come up. Let's go right to the other side. We have a big program today. If you need to rest, you could pause the video, but you'll get a rest as soon as this practice is over. So let's see if we can Use these standing poses to build not only strength, but stamina and willpower and courage. Now, press your inner right heel down and out towards the outer edge of that foot and then press the outer edge of that foot down. Now, you've turned the left front thigh from the inside out. Turn the left side of the pelvis to the right and feel as you turn the left front thigh out and the left uh, pelvis to the Right, feel how that helps give you that gripping at the outer hip. Now lift there and bend there. Lift and bend there. Keep the outer edge of your right foot on the floor. Now take your hand to your waist and with an exhalation and keeping the outer edge of your right foot pressing down, inner right thigh lifting up, both knees turning away from each other, inner knees to the outer knees, take that left hand down. Now move your chest in the direction of your head that's it. Good, Elvin. Now reach back through that right arm. Keep the arm straight. As you take the right arm up, lift the right shoulder up towards the right hand. Left shoulder blade down towards the left hand. Now with an exhalation, you're going to turn your palm towards the wall that the crown of your head is facing and take your arm over your head. Inner right thigh up, inner right heel down, and you have to lift that um, uh, inner right thigh up and reach out from your waist to your hand. Now take the arm up, press the outer edge of the right foot down, and inhale to come back up. Straighten your left leg, turn your feet to face forward, and then jump or step your legs back together again. Take your feet apart for Baddha Hastasana. So you're going to hold your elbows, your forearms, or your wrists over your head. That's it. 
Now press the inner upper thighs back and towards the wall behind you. And with an exhalation and keeping the front of the trunk from the hips to the shoulders moving towards your head, not down towards the floor, but up towards your head with an exhalation, turn the back thighs out, the front of the thighs in, and extend forward and downward towards the floor. Forward and downward towards the floor. See that the crown of the head faces the floor and your, the tip of your nose is pointing back towards the wall behind you, not up towards your navel. Back towards the wall behind you. Reach down into your feet from your um, middle abdomen and from the sides of your trunk, descend down to those armpits, from the armpits to the elbows, even can you release the base of your skull away from the tops of your shoulders, spread out across the tops of the shoulders and the collarbones. Move your sternum towards your head. Move your sternum towards your head. And then change the interlace of your forearms. And again, keep pressing those heels down, lifting the front of the thighs up. Press the front of the thighs back, but move the buttocks in the direction of your head. And then take your hands to the floor. Now, bring your head, neck, and chest up and away from the floor until you're able to stretch the whole front of your trunk forward. You may need to take your hands up your shins. Go ahead, Elvin, show them how to do that so that you can take your trunk into this concave position where you're spreading out across the tops of the shoulders and the collarbones, out across the upper back thighs. Press the feet down, inhale, take your hands to your hips and come up. Vira Bhadrasana 1. Join the inner edges of your feet. Take your hands to your collarbones, bend your knees and jump your arms and legs wide and out to the sides. You okay? Okay. Now turn your upper arms from the inside out so that your elbows, the inner elbows, the forearms, the front of your forearms, your wrists and your palms face the ceiling. Now spread out across the collarbones and the top of the shoulder blades and take the top of the upper arm bones back behind your chest as you raise your arms up to Urdhva Hastasana. Keep the buttocks descending down and the frontal hip bones and the pubis stretching up in the direction of your head. Use your arms to help lift your back ribs up. So the buttocks are going down and the bottom back ribs move back towards your skin and up towards your head so that you feel the length in your lower back. Now turn your right leg out, left foot in, left heel out, and this time you're turning with an exhalation. You may need to walk your right foot over to the right to do that. Turn not just your left calf out or your left heel, but turn the back of the knee and the back of the thigh near the pelvis from the inside out. Now, stamp the outer edge of that left foot down, lift the whole front of the trunk up and the back of the trunk, and with an exhalation, bend right at the top of the root of the right thigh. Move the right buttock bone down towards the floor, and that's good, good. And now from here, you're going to keep that inner left knee and inner left upper thigh pressed back so that left heel stays down. Left heel stays down. Move the ribs, the back bottom ribs back and lift them up as you bend your knee a little bit more on that right side. Now reach up through your arms and then turn, straighten your leg, turn your trunk to face forward. Keep your arms up, turn your left foot to the left, left leg to the left, and that right heel, you have to press the inner edge down and out to the back heel. So you feel the outer edge of the right foot down on the floor. Now, don't just turn the right calf out or the back of the knee out. 
Turn that inner back thigh from the inside out. And you can even take your right hand to your buttock and help move that right buttock down and out to the side. While you keep the front of that right thigh pressed back, the heel is down, the thigh is up, and the front of the thigh is pulled up and back and towards the wall behind you. Now with an exhalation, bend and lifting the back ribs up. Yes, sternum up. Spread out across the collarbones and the top of the shoulder blades and keep that left foot pressing down into the floor and forward towards the wall in front of you to help keep that right heel down. Keep that right heel down. Lift the whole front of the trunk up and move that right buttock, middle buttock against the back of the pelvis. Don't let the right knee bend. Now reach up through the arms to straighten your left leg. Turn to face forward, bring your arms down halfway, exhale, and jump your arms and your legs back to Tadasana. Vrikshasana. This is the tree pose. So, Elvin's going to show a method for practicing at the wall. He's going to turn sideways. You're going to um, take your right leg out to the right. And I'm going to move over so you can see me. And we're both going to take our right leg up. Now, earlier we talked about turning the back of the thighs out, the front of the thighs in, and pressing the inner upper thighs back and towards the wall behind you. Maintain that connection between the inner upper thighs and the inner heels, especially on that standing leg. Now, that left heel is pressing down, left front thigh lifting up, and press the left front thigh back. Take your left hand to your waist or to the wall and bend your right knee. Pull your heel up towards your buttock bone so that the calf and the thigh are as close together as possible. And then place that, turn the right leg out as you would in Trikonasana or Virabhundra uh, Parshva Kanasana. Uh huh. And then from here, you're going to, even though you've turned the thigh out, reach from the inner thigh to the inner knee and turn the inner knee to the outer knee. Turn the inner knee to the outer knee. Now move that right buttock down towards the floor and keep the right side of the pelvis pulled up and over to the left. The buttock is descending down, but don't drop that hip down. Now from here, take your hands to Namaskarasana. If you lose your balance, like I just did, take your foot back up. Be undaunted in your efforts. Remember that your practice is an offering. And come to Namaskarasana. Keep the weight balanced evenly between the inner edge of the left foot, the outer edge of the left foot. And now take the arms up to Urdhva Hastasana. You can bend your elbows to take your arms up. Now spread out across the collarbones and the top of the shoulder blades to join the palms. Pull the elbows up and back and towards the wall behind you. That's it. And you can come in and out of Rikshasana as you fall in and out. Come back up. And then back to Tadasana. Rikshasana on the left. Pull that right inner thigh up and press it back towards the wall behind you. Bend your left knee, bring your heel towards your buttock. And now from that inner upper thigh, left inner upper thigh, reach all the way to your inner left knee. Then the, from the inner knee to the outer knee, reach. And from the outer knee, pull back to the outer hip. Now you've turned the thigh, the left thigh out, but lift that left side of the pelvis up and move it over to the right, but keep that left buttock descending downward. Keep that left buttock descending downward. I can see, because I'm having trouble with my balancing poses, that's not surprising um, due to the circumstances of the world that we find ourselves living in right now. Now fold your palms in front of your chest, lift your chest up towards your hands, but not your left buttock, and then with an exhalation, with skill and sensitivity, stretch up like the tree that this pose is. With the roots 
growing down into the earth, the branches coming out to the sides, and those leaves that are the hands reaching for the sun and the light. And then bend your elbows, bring your hands to Namaskar, and take your foot down. Our next pose is Ardha Chandrasana. It's the half moon pose. Elvin is going to use a block under his hands. We're going to start at the left side of our mats and step out to the right, just so that we stay in the frame for you. Now, this pose starts like triangle pose, which you already know. We're gonna go back to doing it like we have in the past with the hand on the waist. So you do that now. Take your left hand to your waist, turn your pelvis, abdomen, chest, and head to face forward, and with an exhalation, reach out and take your hand to your shin. Now, bend your knee like you're going to come to Parshvakanasana. Keep reaching down into your left heel and take your left right hand to the floor or to the block. You can take your hand to the floor if you can keep your trunk turned to face forward. Now, bend your left knee, step forward with your um, left foot and your right hand. So do you see how our um, the balls of our toes are down, our, um, but the heel is up? Now, I'm still reaching through that heel. I'm gonna turn my whole trunk to face forward and then raise that inner left thigh up and reach the heel back and towards the wall behind me and then straighten my right leg. Press down into your right heel, especially that inner heel, and lift the right front thigh up and press it back, but move the trunk forward in the direction of the head. Now bend your knee, keep your trunk turned up towards the ceiling, the left side. Take your body back into the form of Trikonasana. Reach up through your left arm, press down through your outer left foot, and inhale to come up. Now we're going to go to the other side. So I'm going to start at the right side of my mat, so is Elvin, and we're going to Come to Trikonasana on the left, Uddita Trikonasana. The extension, Uddita, extension, is the stretch of the two legs and the stretch of the two arms. Take your hands to your hand to your waist. Now from here, when you bend this knee, you have to stretch, when you bend the front knee, stretch the back knee even more. And press that right front thigh back so that heel stays down. Now step in with your back foot, move your um, left hand forward, and balance on the ball of that right big toe, turning your pelvis, abdomen, and chest to face forward. Now with an exhalation, you're going to reach out through that right heel and straighten your left leg so that you come to Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon pose. So, Keep that inner left heel pressing down, reach out and back and through that right heel, and turn the right side of your trunk up to face the ceiling, and the left side of your trunk down to face the floor. Move As you reach back through your right heel, stretch your trunk forward towards your head. Then bend your knee, come back to the shape in the form of Trikonasana, stretch your right arm up, press down through your right foot, Inhale and come back up. Take your hands to your waist. Elvin, you're going to need your two blocks. Step your feet together. Come to Tadasana, get your blocks and put them in your hands because we're going to do Parshvotanasana. Take your legs apart. We're turning the legs to the right, the trunk to the right, and with an exhalation, you're going to extend the whole front of your trunk forward towards your leg and take your hands down. Like you did in Uttanasana before, you're in that concave stage where the back of your chest is moving down towards the floor and forward towards your head. Stretch back through your left foot, forward into your right foot, and now with an exhalation, keeping the front of your trunk moving towards your foot, bring your trunk down towards your leg. It has to go forward towards your foot, then down towards your leg. Now. Come back to the concave stage, take your hands to your hips, reach back and down through your left foot and inhale to come up. Turn your legs to the other side. Now, as you did in Utkatasana, keep the buttocks descending down, 
Hips pressed back, middle buttocks pressed forward. Feel how that helps you stretch your trunk, the whole front of your trunk up towards your head. Now, don't just stretch your trunk up, lift your neck up, raise your head up, and push the back of your chest into the front of your chest so that you can spread out across those collarbones and turn your upper arms out. With an exhalation and pressing down into your inner left heel, draw that outer left thigh up, the left hip back, and turn the back of the right thigh out so you come to Udita, this, um, sorry, concave stage of partial Tanasana. Now with an exhalation and reaching back through your right heel, your inner right thigh, turning that right hip to face towards the direction of the crown of the head, take your trunk forward and then downward. It has to go forward as it comes downward, not backward, not backward, forward and downward. Then keep both legs stretched straight. Take your hands to your hips. Inhale and come up. Wide the distance between your two feet for Prasarita Padottanasana. As you press your heels down, inner heels down and out, lift the arches of the feet up, but keep the outer edges of the feet pressed down. Now with an inhalation, lift the um, front of the trunk up, the pubis, and the frontal hip bones and roll the shoulders back. Now with an exhalation, bend forward and keeping your shoulders rolling back, take your hands to the floor and look up and forward, forward and upward, but press the front thighs onto the um, thigh bones, heels down, quadriceps up, front thighs back, especially at the top of the thighs, and then take your hands, slide them back and bend your elbows back towards the wall behind you. Now you have to press your hands down into the floor and pull forward, away from the heels of your hands and towards your fingers to take your head down to the floor. Elvin's doing the method for beginners that we showed in the first video. Um, Elvin, don't take your elbows back so far, bring them towards your legs. Yep, you stay there. So if you're practicing this variation, you want to see that your elbows don't come back too far. That's it. Take that hand back. There you go. Good. Now stretch your trunk forward and take your hands to your waist. Uh-huh. Don't let your elbows go forward. Come on, press your hands down and inhale to come up. That's it. Good. Back to Tadasana. Now to Dandasana for Pachimottanasana. So Elvin's going to sit on two blankets and use his belt. Stretch your legs up. Come to Dandasana. Turn the backs of the thighs out. Turn the backs of the thighs out, especially where they meet the buttocks and move the flesh of the bottom of the buttock away from the buttock bones so that you feel that you're sitting on the upper back thighs. That's it, and you can do that just as Elvin's doing. Um, Elvin, do you think you can come forward a little bit? Bring so. your blankets quickly forward so that people can see you because you're not in the camera. There you go. Okay, good. Sure. Now, from here he's taking the belt around the feet, and I'm going to well, actually, let's come back to Dandasana. You're a little bit ahead. So you're going to stretch the backs of your legs out along the floor, pull the thighs back, reach the calves forward, and press the top of the back of the knees, the upper back thighs, and the heels down into the floor. Now, spread out across the collarbones and the top of the shoulder blades, and take the top of the upper arm bones back and towards the wall behind you, but don't let the elbows go back. The elbows, the back of the elbows lift up and come forward as those shoulders roll back. Now with an inhalation, keeping the legs and the hips pressed down, raise the arms up, look up between your two hands, and with an exhalation, extend forward and reach for the big toes or the outer edges of your feet. Now, press the top of the upper thighs back towards the wall behind you and down towards the floor and pull simultaneously on your belt 
or take your uh, hands wider open so you can spread out across the top of your chest without bending your elbows, do that. Turn your elbows down towards the floor and stretch them. That's it, while keeping your hands apart, do that. That's it. Now, straighten those elbows like you did in Nandasana. Lift the triceps near the top of the upper arms away from the floor and spread out across the top of the collarbone, out across the top of the shoulder blade, and move the outer shoulder blades towards your hips. Back towards your hips, but stretch the sternum up in the direction of your head. Now with an exhalation, lengthen the front of your trunk forward as it comes downward. As it comes downward, it has to go forward towards your feet. You have to use your elbows lifting up and the elbows and the armpits going forward to help take you deeper into Pachimottanasana. Keep the backs of the knees pressed against the floor and the top of the upper thighs. Now keep your legs stretched straight. You can hold your feet now, Elvin. Yep, good. And then press your feet and your hands into each other to straighten your arms. See if you can keep that, yes. Now, outer shoulder blades down, back of the sternum up, spread out across your chest, inhale, and raise those arms up. Now, we're going to practice Ardha Halasana, feet to the chair. So I'm going to fold my mat up, and Elvin's going to bring his mat into the center. Now here's where you would practice. Yeah, you can just bring your whole mat into the center. I'll bring it here. I know I showed you something different earlier, but now you can bring the chair behind you and bring this further this way. So he's going to borrow my blankets and use four blankets. Now, in the first video, we showed you how to practice Setu Bandha Sarvangasana if, you see right there, if uh, you're not practicing um, Ardha Halasana, you're going to practice Setu Bandha Sarvangasana on the block. See how I walk my shoulders and my hands towards my feet and then I extend my knees. I keep my upper arms pressing down as I press the front of the thighs. I turn the um, outer thighs from the hips to the knees up towards the ceiling, the inner thighs from the hips to the knees down towards the floor, and press my shoulders down to the floor simultaneously. Okay, otherwise, you're lying down like Elvin's going to show you. So you're going to take the top of the shoulders a couple of inches away from the blankets. Now straighten your arms and see if you can hold the front legs of that chair. Good. You could also um, take your feet to an ottoman or a coffee table if you don't have a yoga chair. Now take your arms to your sides and bend your elbows. And as you have learned to do in, um, when you lift up to come, uh, lift your hips up to get onto the block and set to Banda with an exhalation, keeping the shoulders down, upper arms near the shoulders turned out, outer upper arm pinned down to the floor, bend your knees into your chest, with an exhalation lift your hips up and swing your legs over your head. You have to press your arms down to do that. Now you can see here that the back of Elvin's trunk is coming down, so he has to take the collarbone spread it out, top of the shoulder blade spread it out, and push the top of that upper arm down to help lift the back of the trunk from the armpit up. Don't take your um, back thighs and turn them in. Turn these out and move your buttock bones away from your heels towards the wall behind you. That's it. Now take your hands to your back and you're going to use this part of your hand where your thumb and your index fingers were on your buttocks before, but now they're going to cut these back ribs in towards your head. Walk your feet further back, Elvin, towards the wall behind you, and press the top of these thighs and the buttock bones up towards the ceiling so you can help lift yourself up even more. Now put your whole palm, see if you can scoop that part of your back up and put your palm on your back. Wow, okay. Now from here, keeping the elbows pressed in, upper arms turning from the inside out. See how he raises one leg up 
and then walk your foot forward on the chair. Uh-huh, yep, to help lift this leg up higher. Now turn the front of the thigh in, the back of the thigh out, and then reach up from the inner thigh all the way to that inner heel. Now lift the front of this thigh up to join those two legs. And you can see, just like when he was in Tadasana, how from the outer ankles, move them back a little bit, yep, to the outer knees, to the outer hips, he's in one line. Now what's going back is his ribs. So he has to walk his hands down his back a little bit more. That's it. Keep stretching your legs completely. Yep, so your buttocks have to lift up and go this way more. Up and that way more. Then press the front thighs back. So the back of the thighs, no, don't turn them in, turn them out. From the outer hips to the outer knees, what happens if you go forward this way? Yep. Do you think you can get your hands down a little bit more? No. So maybe some more blankets would help. You can try doing that. Yep. Okay, now. See how from the shoulders, to the hips, to the knees, to the ankles, he's in one line and he's lifting the whole back of the body up and away from the floor. Now with an exhalation, he's go and the front of the body, he's going to bring his leg that went in first, back down, the one that went in first, back down, that's it, try not to let that leg go back too far, and then bring the other one down. There you go. So this is Ardhahalasana, and he came up to Ekapada Sarvangasana from Halasana. Now take your hands off your back, bend your elbows out to the sides, keep your shoulders on the blankets, but stretch your arms back and towards the wall behind you. Now look back at your feet, and slowly you're going to lower, don't bend your knees yet, you're going to bring your hips down. Now bend your knees, there you go. And look back towards the chair, see how Elvin landed so um, quietly and uh, without lifting his shoulders up, that takes some time and some skill, um, but eventually with practice it comes. So now from here you're going to turn to your side, yes, and inhale to come up. So from here, you would practice um, after Satubandha Sarvangasana or Ardhahalasana to Salamba Sarvangasana, you would practice um, Shavasana. We have a Shavasana for Beginners video on our YouTube channel. It's also um, a great way to uh, practice if you're going to um, work on Ujjayi breathing, um, stage one, stage two, from light on um, uh, Pranayama by BKS Iyengar. Um, where you first make the breath um, even and deep and it's initiated um, from uh, different parts of the body and ends at specific parts of the body and then uh, to make that ex make, make the stage two you make the exhalations deeper uh, but we're going to say goodbye for now and I'll say thank you to Elvin thank you for your practice and your presence here today um, he's a uh, 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 a wonderful example of um, what it means to um, practice for a long time, Dirgakala, Nairantarya, without interruption. Um, as Gita Iyengar would say, when you feel good, when you don't feel good, that is how you make progress. And also um, with a, um, a devotion, not only to Patanjali, but to Guruji, and to all of the teachers of yoga, we say Om Shanti Shanti. <laughs>